All right. I have known you my whole life, yes. Well, no, you have not known me your That's whole life. That's true. All right, you got me. Yeah, you have not <laughs> known me your whole life. I had three blissful years without Jake. <laughs> <laughs> three blissful years. <laughs> Hey, Ryan, welcome. So glad that you're here. Uh, I just hey. made you co-host. Uh, so you can you start bringing people on up? You got it. All right. Sounds good. So we're bringing you all up on camera because we want to make this feel like we're all hanging out together. Let's just pretend we're all in the same room, uh, even though obviously we're not. But we're going to pretend that we are. And um, so as you're being pulled up, I'd love to see in the comments, in the comments, where are you guys coming from? Who is here and where are you coming from? Type that into the comments. Type that in, type that in. Let me see who is here and where you are coming from. Hey, Cordelia, how's it going? Carol, GW, Judy, Kang, Greg, Nancy, so good to see you. Oh man, now I have so many. Uh, it's funny when I ask for people to say something in the comments, then all of a sudden there's way too many to read. But welcome everyone, so glad that you're here. As we're getting started, what I'd love to hear is a couple introductions. Hey, that's not Colin Ryan. <laughs> hey Lindsay, how's it going? I, I just I just saw Colin's name coming over. So I, you, yeah, you're, you're, you're uh, yeah, well welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Oh, there's Colin. And uh, Lindsay, so glad that you're here. In fact, Lindsay, how about we start with you? Share us something that is new and good. Oh my gosh. I have been doing these I Am Remarkable workshops, and I had women from all over the world today participate from Nestle. <laughs> so That's they're awesome. going really well. Yeah. Great. Great. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank and, you. And uh, I'd like you to share what you shared with me a couple weeks back about how this idea that business can't happen right now was really just a limiting belief. Share with, with me what this, you this said. This is happening, folks. Yes. <laughs> I, have, I have had, again, uh, what, we're like through April. So March and April, my business has like had double the revenue that it's had before. So people really need the skills that this whole network has. People need our support more than ever. And my business is just... Uh, you know, an example of that. So yeah, pretty amazing. Absolutely. absolutely. I loved hearing you say that a couple of weeks ago, and I'm so glad you could share that now. And really, I think about myself about six weeks ago, I decided that I am now a uh, dealer of hope. That's really, really what I am. And I'm out here telling people that you can do it and you can. And when you like, it's so simple, right? Look, you're all coaches, speakers, authors, and we all say these things like, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you are right. But yet, when times get tough, how many of us abandon those beliefs? How many of us throw those out the window? And right now is when that matters more than ever. Because it's as simple as this. If you believe that you can't, what you will do is nothing. And then you will be right. You will be right that it's not going to work. And if you believe you can, see the person who believes they can, what do they do? They try something. And then if that doesn't work, they try something else. And then if that doesn't work, they try something else. And they try something else. Then they try something else until it gets there. You just keep going and keep going. And so it is true. And all I want you guys to do is to actually believe the messages that you have been telling people for however many years it's been. You've been telling people that when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. You've been telling people that you can do it, that you can break through any challenge. And now's your time to prove to yourself that you really believe that, that you really believe that. Uh, let's see, let's hear a couple other new and good. I'd love to hear some other people sharing what is new and good. You can either raise your hand physically or you can raise your hand with a virtual hand raise. And uh, if I don't see some hands, I'm just gonna call on some people. Okay, Dr. Catherine. Let's hear Dr. Kath Catherine and then Nancy. New and good. I recently was on a podcast with a fellow coach who is based out of Yakima, Washington. And I am going to be connecting him with two other individuals at least 
that he can interview new little people through transition. He's looking for more people that he can interview. So cool. if you would like to be on the people in transition, talk to me and I'll connect you with Bob. Very but cool. He's awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Hey, uh, Tara here is very close to you. Tara is very close to you. And uh, uh, so is Greg Kettner that says Colin Ryan. That's, uh, that says Ryan Colin for his name. But uh, anyway, but so as you can see here, Greg, Greg, can you raise, can you uh, wave real quick? So Greg and Tara, Tara, can you wave as well? They are close to you there. So maybe you guys can connect. Roland, you're close there too as well. A lot of Eastern Washington people here. Very cool. Okay, and then let's. Roland? Oh, okay. See, I, I know Greg. I don't know Tara, and I don't know Roland, but now I have faces. Great. Sounds good. <laughs> Nancy, what's out. doing good? Me, Nancy? Yes. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I apologize for my look. I just got done with the workout, and I thought, oh, I got to get to that. So um, I just released a book that I've been working on with two co authors for two and a half years, and it's like, giving birth and it's good to sleep again at night <laughs> that's where it's different than giving birth yes <laughs> yeah and so so i'm i'm kind of in a all right here we go place and so that's why i'm super happy to be here today great wonderful well, so good so glad everything's going so well so welcome everyone let's see tara looks like you're raising your hand do you want to share something new and good yeah, if, I'll just do 30 seconds that I had intention of creating an online training program, but I was so busy with my in-person that this then gave me the opportunity to spread the good, spread the good love online as well. So, um, you know, there's, there's blessings in so many different ways. There's just gifts that, that happen and I'm, you know, it's a roller coaster, and most of the time I can remember that. Sometimes I don't, but most of the time I can. So I'm just glad to be here with you all. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that. One last thing I want to share before we jump into uh, me talking with Kenny about looking professional on video is over the last couple weeks, just by a raise of hands, you can share. It's a, a safe place to be able to share. Um, how many of you have slipped back into comparison with other people or comparison of your past how many of you have an arm and can raise it okay very cool uh how many of you have ever seen that you've started to slip back into maybe something that you thought that you had overcame before how many of you had that i think most of us have and i can tell you with my one-on-one -on -one clients with my group clients i've heard it over and over again and the question that people are saying is why is this happening? I thought I was over this. And then they start beating themselves up about why they're feeling things that they thought they were over. Let me tell you the answer. There's a global pandemic going on. That's the answer. So give yourself a break and realize that it's okay. It's okay. If you're not moving as fast as you were, maybe six weeks ago, that's okay. At least you're moving forward. And if you're not moving forward, figure out how to move forward. And that's all that matters. All that matters is that you improve 1% every day. 1% every day. That's all that matters. Can you improve 1% from what you did yesterday? Because if you multiply 1% every single day, right? If you become 1% better than you were yesterday, and you do that every day for 365 days, you are not 365% better. You are around, this is rounding up, but 3,800% better than you would be today. So it's okay if you just grow a little bit every single day. That's it. And if you ever get into a place where your mental headspace, where you're starting to think, why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing that? Just chill out and give yourself a break. It's okay. Just keep going, keep moving forward. You got this. Okay, so how many of you make video? How many of you make videos? If you don't, well, I don't know what you're doing right now. You gotta be making video. That's really what it comes down to. And how many of you want to look even better on live video? All right, I think everyone does. So today I'm bringing on my brother, Kenny Ballantyne. Kenny, give us a wave. Hello. And uh, Kenny and I are going to be talking about looking professional on video. Uh, just a, a little background on Kenny. 
Yes, he is my brother, but he's also a professional videographer, a uh, professional documentarian. He even had one of his documentaries debuted at a little place called the White House. And um, you know, so he's had some really, really great things in his career and has made a career out of interviewing people who are not used to being interviewed because he's doing this in documentaries and things and helping them feel comfortable. So we're here talking about, we're going to be talking about uh, tech things. We're also going to be talking a lot about just how to make things look great and also how to seem comfortable and how to seem professional when you are on video. So Kenny, before we get started, just uh, tell us just briefly a little bit about yourself, whatever I missed, and then we'll get into this. Okay. Uh, so I've, been running a commercial videography company for the last 14 years now. So I've been, been around the block a few times. And um, like, like Jake said, uh, there's, there's a lot of different, there's, there's a lot of different people out there who do video. If there's one thing that I feel makes me uh, different from the rest or the thing that I feel like I'm the best at, it's helping people be comfortable confident and themselves in front of the camera. We'll get into all kinds of like technical things that, that you can do to make yourself look better on camera. But the first and most important is that you're owning your space, feeling good, feeling conf confident and being your true self. So how does one feel confident on camera when I'll tell you the question I hear more than any is I'm used to talking on stage. I'm used to talking in front of people. I'm used to talking one-on-one -on -one with someone. But when I look into a camera, I freeze. I feel uncomfortable. All of a sudden, I get tongue-tied. What kind of things do you do to help people get through that? The first thing that people should understand is that that is the most universal reaction to cameras on Earth. And even, I mean, I'm in front of a camera all the time. I'm behind cameras a lot, but I'm also in front of them a lot. And I still have the deer in the headlights moment. Sometimes while doing Facebook live videos, those are, that, that's always very comfortable when that happens. Um, and so I think the, the first step to that is just embracing that that is completely normal, right? Uh, that anyone that's on the other side of the screen watching you is only identifying with the fact that you maybe have a deer in the headlights moment. So just own that, know that it's totally normal. And then the second half is just, it's just repetition. You got to make and make and make and make. It's the first advice I give to anyone who wants a career in creating videos professionally or in filmmaking. It's just start making stuff, you know, get, get, get out there and make something bad, make something ugly. That's totally, totally fine. It's where we all start. And uh, it's the only way to get any better. Yeah. It, it's one of the things I share with, my clients often is if you want to get better at video, you, you have to do it. There's no, there's yeah. no replacement for that repetition. And people say, well, I'm afraid because I don't want people to see it. I say, that's fine. How about you just make a video every day with your phone and then delete it. You don't need to post it. It could just be for practice. Yeah. It could just be doing it for practice. I see <laughs> It sounded like my son. I'm glad it wasn't, but it sounded like him. Uh, Kenny, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see from people making video? Uh, okay, so should we start on the sort of the more philosophical side or the technical audiovisual side? Let's start with whatever you feel is most important. Okay, all right. In that case, um, this will fly a little bit in the face of the topic of our whole conversation today. But the first thing, the first mistake that most people make is getting too preoccupied and worked up about looking professional. Now I'm going to spend the rest of the day on how to look professional, but that whole concept, that whole idea of, oh, I'm going to be in front of people on camera. I have to make sure I look like a pro is usually the thing that is tripping people up and preventing them from being themselves on camera. And it's kind of an old outdated idea, this idea that uh, professionalism is defined by being very prepared, never saying um, never scratching your face or looking off camera, you know, having your, your whole outfit all 
perfectly lined up and your hair perfect and your makeup and all that kind of stuff. All the that, things Postmasters tells you to do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that is how we've defined professionalism in the past. But in today's world where we are constantly broadcasting and consuming media 24 seven, we have all developed a sniffer for fakeness for, for that, which is artificial. It, it is obvious as can be when someone puts up a facade, whereas in the past we used to see a facade and go like, Oh, they're clearly, they're they're they've done their homework they're prepared look look at how dialed in they are that's not the case today what people want today is authenticity and feeling like oh that's a real human being i can have a connection to um you know it used to be that if you you know dotted every i crossed every t that was the indication that you were professional today we don't we're not looking for that kind of indicator we're looking for indicators that you're a human not not a professional what we want to see is that you are a human being and not a robot and that uh i can trust you and form a human connection to you yeah when do you think that changed it had to have probably with the advent of facebook um i i can't say exactly when but when facebook started using video more i'd say feels like yeah. Feels like it's just always been that way now. <laughs> yeah, totally. When you look at like old commercials, it's painful. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, yeah. Or if you if if you ever stumble upon an old like Tony Robbins infomercial, I mean, it's painful. I love Tony Robbins. I'm a huge Tony Robbins fan. But those old infomercials are painful yeah. to watch. Yeah, I, I see this a lot when I I have a shoot planned with a client. Very often I'll tell my clients when we're going to go shoot with them, don't over prepare. Like I know you are a chiropractor and I know what a chiropractor does. We can work from there. Don't write a script. Don't memorize a script or anything like that. Right, we'll, we'll just work it out. We're going to make this natural. The absolute worst, worst thing you can do is start a video is that, that look into the camera and be like, hi, I'm Kenny Ballantyne. <laughs> right. it's why, the do worst. Those old, why do those old commercials always start with someone on a chair yeah. <laughs> and they go hello <laughs> hello <laughs> like, why is that so so judy wrote that the hallmark channel is painful <laughs> and i i think that that kind of goes along with the, yeah. uh, the age bracket of who the um the demographic is that they're going after that that may be a long time ago you know, that, that was your know, previous to the last 20 years, professionalism. Oh, we lost Kenny. I'm still here. And look, I'm, I, I'm cool with that. I'm cool okay, with the camera. Just, go. just blinking out. I'm just showing that that's fine. I'm not going to freak go. out. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I find that the funniest moments in speaking happen when there's a problem. You know, when, when a problem happens and you play with it. One time I tripped on stage on a microphone stand in front of 500 middle schoolers and of course they all laughed at me i got up i made a joke about it then they laughed even more i kept calling back to that you know throughout it and afterwards the principal asked me if that was on purpose he asked me if that was staged because it went so well yeah it's, yeah. it's the good moment i mean it's, it's those mess ups that end up going so well well it's because it's authentic yeah it's real let, let's get into some of the, because I'm sure that here, here's what I want to do. I want to hit some of these, these questions that we have that I, I know people have and that mm -hmm. I hear often. And then I want to open up to Q and a from you guys. Uh, Colin, I don't know what this sign language means. <laughs> Colin looked at me and went, it's a, uh, it's magic. I said, I'd love to see a photo of Kenny's setup because uh. it's like, He's so close. It's just beautiful. It's like, wow. <laughs> You're a beautiful man. I feel like I'm just connecting to you. But it actually, genuinely, would be interesting to know, like, I totally, am I interrupting? <laughs> like, are you using a camera or your webcam from your laptop? Or? Uh, I'm actually using my, my everyday shooter camera. Okay. I have an interface that allows me to use it as my webcam. So yeah, I'm, I'm totally cheating. I have professional lights and a professional mic and I've used all of my props to set up a very cool 
background behind me because I, people have another set of expectations for me. I, I can't have an ugly background and be poorly lit uh, as a professional video producer. So it looks great, man. <laughs> well, I Thank just you. like your sign language. It was. It was no, I didn't realize you could see. <laughs> hey, I'll take a. I'll take a wide picture and I'll send it to you guys. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. So, let, um, can let's... I say something about that? Because, like, so, so you and I, Jake, are completely unified in this idea that authenticity is king. That's what's most important. But at the same time, you and I both have a setup behind us that looks, well, fantastic, right? You're very well lit. Your, your eye line is right where it should be on sort of close to the upper third of the screen. Uh, your background is sort of some distance behind you. It looks really, really nice. Um, so while I, while I always stress first and foremost that authenticity is king, and the word I like to use is genuity, which I know English majors is not a real word, but it's what I say. Uh, genuity is king. At the same time, the more uh, comfortable we can make a viewer when they're watching your content, the more they're going to be focusing on your genuity and less on whatever weird stuff is behind you on the wall or the fact that there's a loud hum coming through the speakers or that they can't see your face, right? So all of those things do matter and are worth putting time and effort into, but only if you're first your genuine self. Yeah. Let, let's get into a couple questions on some of the tech things, and then we're going to jump into their Q and A. So, you know, back to this idea of what are some of the mistakes that you see. So, let you first. You said let's get into the yeah the, the you know this about your actual delivery. Now let's talk about some of the tech things. What are some yeah. of the mistakes that you see? Yeah. Uh, so just simple, simple things that can can make your your shot look better. Um, I'll, okay, well, I'll start here. The first mistake that I think uh, people go to a real quick, easy Band-Aid to try to make their background look cooler. And I know, I know I'm calling out some people on the call here. It's nothing personal, but I got to bring it up. And it's the overuse of the virtual background. Now, why am I, <laughs> why am I anti I forgot that was even on there when I fired this up today. <laughs> <laughs> I did it for a, a, a space talk that I was doing. <laughs> Well, that, that part that's, of space cop. That's appropriate, and, right? <laughs> yeah, I thought he was calling out me because I have my logo on my virtual background. I'm not. I'm not calling out any individuals. I'm just <laughs> saying that we all go through a virtual background phase at some point. <laughs> but what I will say is that um, a real a real background where you have some separation from what's behind you will always make you look better. But two. If, if we're trying to get rid of the idea of a facade of fakeness of, of, of any of, of trying to focus on that, which is authentic, then we would be better served having no actual facades in our video. That, that's what a, I mean, technically a facade I think is in front of us instead of behind us, but <laughs> a, a virtual background is in fact a facade. So, uh, from a technical standpoint, the thing that bother, bothers me about virtual backgrounds is they are more in focus than the person, than the person that is in the shot. You have a crisp photograph that's you know high resolution and looks great, but in when a when a camera shoots something, it focuses on the person, and then the background gets soft, gets a little blurry, and so the person stands out as you are the most important thing in the frame. If the background is crisp and you are blurry, you are soft, that's suggesting that what's on the background is actually what matters, what matters more than you. And especially if, we, if, you got, if you got the whole galaxy and the planet Earth behind you, that, it does take some attention away from the very cool person who should we, we should be focusing on, right? Um, so I, I always say use a real background Find, if at all possible, a way to give it some distance behind you. You want some separation from the wall. Any, the more depth you can have behind you, the more you are going to come out as the most important thing in the frame. Uh, so Jake's a good example. Colin uh, is a really good example of that too. Um, 
very well, the two of you are really well lit and you have a lot of space behind you. It feels very comfortable. Um, so that, that's, that's one thing. Always give some space <laughs> behind you. Rich, I, I like the changing. That, that last one looked like the Wicked Witch of the West was coming in. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's, that's the, the Northern Light. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's the Northern Lights. But it, I just saw this green on the side and I went, what's going on there? So when is, um, when is an appropriate time to use virtual backgrounds? Uh, well, if, if, you, if you have a, a good reason where it is only magnifying your message, or well, I don't know, even, even that, if you're the one speaking, then you are the most important thing for someone to be paying attention to. If you're putting a virtual background up, it should be something that keeps you the most important thing in the frame. So if you're going to go virtual, I, I don't know if you would necessarily want your branding or a big, beautiful picture of something else because it's not, it's, it's not true to you. Um, I'd say more like an abstract, like a, like a blurred out kind of abstract or just sort of like a soft gradient would be a better virtual background. But still, I, I would let people see that you're in your home, that you're, you know, especially right, right now, here we are in the, this moment in history where we're all united, we're all going through the same kind of things. It might, it, it's probably a better time than ever to show that, oh yeah, I don't have this beautiful fake office behind me. This is actually where I work, <laughs> right? Here's my house. That's my kid running behind me. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think we're going to be better served by going to questions. So what I'd like to do is anyone who has a question, type it in, and then I will call on you to actually ask the question. So let's start with Jason. Cool. Uh, Jason, can you ask your question first? Yeah. Well, I was curious, Jake, how much space I've been doing videos and I've been changing where I sit in my office to give more space behind me which isn't how I sit now. So I'm curious how much space you have behind where you are and the wall behind you. Yeah, there, there's probably about six feet. You okay. know, th this, this room is probably 12 feet long, 12 feet by 12 feet. You know, it's not a giant room, but it's probably about 12 feet by 12 feet. I'm sitting almost in the exact center of this room. Okay. I'm almost exactly in the center. If you saw, sometime I'll take a picture. I have a desk and then I have a big giant table right behind that desk to be able to put while well, I have screens and all this kind of thing. I have this, uh, what, did, what did Dwight Schrute call it? Like, like super desk or something like that. I don't know if anyone remembers that from the mega office. Mega desk. Mega desk. That's it. Mega <laughs> desk. I have mega desk going on right here. Um, but I physically am pretty much in the center of this room and there's about six feet behind me. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, this, the cinematic moment where they rack focus and you have, you have, uh, you know, they're using that really shallow depth, uh, feet of, uh, field lens and you go from a, a blurry background to, or a blurry foreground that just rolls into focus and it just looks beautiful and cinematic. That's, that's the whole point of the, of the distance from the wall is that as you give more distance, you become more separated. The background goes a little more blurry and you become more crisp. And what that does psychologically is I can tell you are important. <laughs> you are important. Nice. Uh, let's go with Steve's question. Steve, ask your question about uh, guitars. You're going to need to unmute yourself. Yeah, just trying to un unmute myself. Yeah, so you said the eyes at the one third. I was like, okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I... I'm saying this because I get comments on it all the time, like every single time. And last week when we did the meeting, um, uh, Jake actually commented, wow, look at all the guitars. So it, it is obviously an eye catcher, but I don't know if it's too distracting. Um, if it's, I mean, it's real. Uh, <laughs> it's authentic. I'm, very genuine. I, uh, right. I'm going to go out on a limb and just guess that uh, you have some passion for music and guitars. Right. Yeah. So, so that's so, that's kind so, of my yeah. main thing. the the other The other question is like this business over here is all kind of like dark and like so. There's a lot of stuff. It just feels like there's a lot of junk in here. Uh, the guitars stand out, obviously, but so 
Yeah, I love I love the guitars, and I think that should definitely stay. If you wanted, if you know, if if you wanted to make this your your space for video, uh, I I would, you know, I don't know what's possible in your space right now, but if within the realms of what's possible, decluttering and taking out some of the other things that are a little more distracting, no. um, you know. At, if we were having a long, like 45 minute conversation, I know that my ADD self would begin trying to figure out how many pins are in that cup over there. And, and okay. I go, oh, well, I have a Bell uh, bicycle helmet too. And you know, that kind of thing. Funny. So, <laughs> so the, but the, the guitars definitely reinforce who you are. Sure. Uh, but at the same time, too, too much can start to pull your attention. Right. So. And, and I would think like get the crappie, I've got a, a crappie up here a fish right there uh-huh so if i go like there maybe i want to get the crappie out crop the crappie yeah um, is that a musical fish yeah it's <laughs> unless it's a it sing fish. yeah does that fish sing it, it, it does not no okay. it's, uh, it was <laughs> actually fish? a real crappie yeah no but you raised a, an important point about eyeline and you're you're nailing it right now you get so many calls lately where i talk to people at like this oh yeah you look like they hang on to the edge like they're peeking <laughs> over uh or like this and 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 being too high in the frame and too low both both do something to your shot you know if, if i were directing a movie and we were shooting from above down at someone it would be to make them look inferior or weak or without influence Whereas if we, you know, shot from like way underneath, it would be to demonstrate that they are like overbearing, uh, dominant. You know, if you want to meet some, you want to connect to someone, you want to feel like we're talking straight into their eyes. And the best way to do that is to line up on the upper third of the frame. If you div divide the screen into thirds, put your eyes right on that top line. So Great. Let's go to Greg. Greg, can you ask your question? Greg Kettner. Hey Kenny, I uh, was just asking about, um, I see a lot of these ring lights on Amazon. Yeah. Are, are those of value? Do they work? Or what would you suggest where I'm not spending three grand? Yeah, well, you certainly don't have to spend three grand on a good ring light. Uh, they are fantastic for making a soft diffused light. The whole, the whole point of a ring light is that it spreads the light out, which gets rid of harsh shadows. So I'm underneath a ring light right now. Mine's a real big one. Um, there's really inexpensive ones that do the job very, very well. Um, but what they do, the function is diffused spread light. And you can do that without buying a ring light. There's lots of ways of diffusing or spreading light. So if you have just a normal old desk lamp or whatever you have access to, if you shine that light through, say, some thin fabric or even bounce it off of a wall, you'll spread it out and diffuse it. Harsh lights on your face makes all every crease uh, show up and look more pronounced. The, the quickest way to make yourself look older and uglier is to shine a bright light directly on yourself. Uh, diffuse that light, make it nice and soft, either bounce it off a wall or through something and you get the same effect or by a ring light. Yeah. Now, uh, talk about the difference between a ring light or soft boxes. You know, I have two soft boxes here. Yeah. And if everyone can see, I just took a photo of it so you could see what those look like. Mm -hmm. I have two soft boxes. That, that cost me 150 bucks for a set of three of these off of Amazon. Uh, I bought those five years ago and they're still going strong. So it's probably the best 150 bucks I've ever spent. And, um, but talk about the difference. You know, I've, I've, I've had a ring light before. Personally, I've liked these more because they tend to light the behind me better than just the ring. Can you talk about the difference between a ring light and these softbox lights? I don't even really know the difference. I mean, in essence, you're trying to do the same thing. And I think, uh, uh, you, you could pretty much pull off the, the same effect because you have three, you're filling a lot more of your space with that light. Mm -hmm. If you had one and you're just lighting you, I think either the ring light or the one soft box would have pretty much the same effect. But a soft box is basically, a, it puts a sheet of fabric in between your light bulbs and you. And you have this really nice evenly lit 
I mean, you can almost see no shadows no. at all in your shot. And it's because, and, you, and they're normal light bulbs, right? In your set, those are just normal everyday light bulbs inside. Yeah. But yeah. going through, through that diffusion material, it spreads the light out and it just looks awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go with Daniel. He says he has a question about his virtual background. Daniel, come on up. Yeah, so I've been showing you guys some different backgrounds here. I have, uh, currently this is me at the Napa Valley. Uh, I had my, had uh, jellyfish up before. Um, so um, my question is, uh, my dog is running in and out all the time. Uh, knocking open the door, I'll close the door. She'll find a way to knock it open. It's just distracting. So I'm actually back there banging on the door stopper to try to get me to open the door to let her back out. Then she wants to come back in. So uh, this has been my... <laughs> My way of kind of resolving that, you know, yeah. um, I have, I've, I mean, I've, I've hunted for all kinds of backgrounds and stuff like that. I've got a whole bunch of them, you know, but um, I kind of like them. They're fun to play with. You know, um, I don't know that it looks, does it look that unnatural? Like what I have right now? I mean, is it, I have, for example, one with like my back, my backyard on there. You know, that's what I started with today. Um, what do you, what do you, I mean, do you really think that it's a deterrent or it kind of like, you know, breaks the, I think it can be, but I also think it can, you know, you can use it to solve a problem, right? If, yeah. if, if you don't have something better and this is covering up what you need to cover up, then that's cool. Uh, what I would do, what the artist filmmaker in me would want to do with, with you and what you've got, because we all got to work with what we got, right? Um, I would, is this one, actually one of your pictures? Uh, actually, I got this from a really nice vineyard in Napa Valley. I just pulled right. yeah. out their site. So. That's awesome. Okay. So. I would take this picture and, and if you, if you know how to do this, you could do it. If not, I'm sure you have someone uh, that you know well who can, cause it's pretty basic. But if you put a slight blur on the photograph, okay. Uh, drop it into Photoshop or whatever you could do it on your iPhone, but you put a little blur on it. I did this with a friend of mine. He actually had taken a picture of the wall of his living room and wanted to make his virtual background look like he was in his living room. Now he was obviously, he was actually in his office with a green screen behind him, but he wanted to look like he was in his house, but he couldn't work in his house because he had noisy kids. Um, but the problem was the, the wall behind him looked sharper and prettier than he so did. How do, you, how do you add that blur? So you can either drop it, you have to either drop it into some kind of app. So like your, your iPhone, if you open up your photos, you can hit edit and there's an option in there. Uh, you, if you get it into Photoshop, if you're a Photoshop guy, or like I said, easiest way is to put it on Facebook and say, which of my friends has Photoshop and can put a blur on this for me. <laughs> Kenny, I'll tell you an even easier way, yeah. easier way. And I do this for pretty much everything I do. I don't actually know anything about tech, but I'm really good at Googling things. There you go. And so if you just type in like, cause I've done this before with blur. If you type in th this is the exact words, blue, uh, blue. Blur photo online free. Just type in those words and like 10 different programs come up where you upload it. You put what percentage you want. You just get to do a sliding scale one way or another. And then you get to download the photo. It's super cool. simple. You don't need to deal with learning a new program. It's just as simple as upload, change it. Then you get to download it. Yeah. So, um, and it, it just needs to be a slight blur, just a little bit. And you'll pop out. You know, it'll, it'll, you could leave a picture like that. It'll leave, it'll look like you're actually there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That's a, that's a really good tip. And one thing I wanted to say before we go to some of these more questions is anything that Kenny is saying, anything that I ever say, any of these things that it, these are designed to make you better, but done is better than perfect. Oh yeah. Done is always better than perfect. And so if you're in a situation, you know, if you're in a situation like Daniel is where he goes, okay, my dog's going to be barking, all these kind of things, like Kenny's client there with a kid running in and out. If you're in that kind of situation, you go, well, the only way I'm going to do this video is if I do this because I'm in my garage and it's a mess or whatever, then, then do it, do whatever that is. I always say that done is better than perfect. I think that live videos look better when you hold your phone this way or when you hold your phone that way. I, I think they look better when you hold your phone this way rather than holding your phone that way. But sometimes people forget or sometimes it's just more comfortable for me to hold it this way. And sometimes I just don't care. You know, I, I, I just, 
I would rather get something done and be out and be in front of people and be able to communicate my message no matter what. So you know what? I, my hair is bushy because like everyone else, you haven't been able to go to the barber. Mm, and I was like, going to point that out. <laughs> um, I'm not supposed to brush the sides of my hair, you know? Um, <laughs> But like when, when it comes down to it though, I go, okay, well right now it's a different situation, but I think about the past and I know that there were times years ago where I wouldn't make a video because I'd say I need to get a haircut. And that's just silly. Just do it. Make the video, put it out there, put the content out there because done is better than perfect. And outside of saying something offensive, there is nothing that you can do that will be worse than not doing anything. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. There's nothing that you can do that will be worse than not showing up. So that's really important for you guys all to hear. Um, okay, Janet has a question. Ask your question, Janet. Hey, Kenny, how you doing? Hey, Janet, how are you? I'm great. So uh, <laughs> frequency, what is too much and what is too little? Give us your expert opinion. All right, on actually making your own videos and posting them online, we're exactly. referring to. Yeah. Uh, my opinion on frequency uh, is that tip typically there's no such thing as too much. Um, th there's a lot of concern. Like uh, again, I think this is sort of an old school mindset. People get worried about list fatigue and about people unsubscribing or getting annoyed if we uh, you know hit them up too much. But that that's like an old that's an email marketing problem. It's not a problem with posting content, uh, video content, especially because remember people are, people are consuming this, this way, right? And if they see another Janet fish video that they don't want to see, they're just going to keep going until they find the cat or whatever they are hoping to find. <laughs> um, so the, the answer is that, uh, too much is when you're forcing it. Right. If you are having to uh, get redundant or make stuff up, uh, uh, you know, you're feeling like you're you're trying to force new material out every day, and you don't know what is left to talk about, or you're hating it. <laughs> you're finding that it's just not fun anymore because you're overdoing it. That's when it's totally appropriate to dial it back. But within those parameters, um, there's no such thing as too much. Now, consistency in terms of keep going, right? Even if it's once a week, you're gonna stick with once a week or twice a week or three a week, a pattern, that's very important. But in terms of too much, that's not a thing. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, Tara, ask your question. Tara Weir. Well, hello guys. Hi. I somebody that wears glasses and mm -hmm. I also am a communication specialist and I really believe in eye contact, but I struggle to get the shadows gone, the glare gone, the yeah. like, I have a ring light as you can I, see. I can glasses. see it. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> I have this glaring light. I just ordered two soft boxes that are going to be here on Sunday. So I cannot wait to set them up, but I just want to figure out how to minimize glare if you would. Yeah. So first, uh, they don't care about it on uh, CE, uh, C what is it, Crime Scene Investigation? What's the show called? I, I've, I've seen the lights reflected in those guys' glasses so many times. Really? So, I'll have to pay attention to that. I never It even happens noticed. in movies all the time because <laughs> it's a pain in the butt to try to fix. It's very difficult. Uh, the best solution that I have found when doing documentary interviews where it's just driven me crazy is literally taking lenses out of glasses oh. and wearing fake glasses. But that's not what I'm going to ask you to do by any stretch of magic, because you no, need to be I able to, to see. see. Yes. <laughs> like, um, so what I would experiment with is uh, trying different angles with your lights. You know, when, when it's reflecting, when we're seeing the reflection, that means it's doing the mirror thing, right? It's at an angle right now where it hits your lens and goes into the camera. And you can manipulate the angle of your camera or the angle of the light to change that. Another option would be to try some more diffusion. Either put something in between the light and you or try bouncing it off of a wall and see if that makes a difference. But remember, people have 
so much patience for the glare in your glasses. No one, yeah. uh, very few people are going to be distracted by that. Okay. Yeah. And when you say diffusion, do you mean like, if, can I put like a white cloth over mm -hmm. my ring light and that might do it? Yeah. I, I wouldn't want it to actually be making contact with your oh. lights, especially okay. if it gets warm. Uh, most, most lights don't get hot, uh, it, modern lights anyway. Oh, yeah. um, especially if they're LED or something like that. But older lights, I mean, I've started fires before. <laughs> that the kind of thing can happen. So you just, just don't want it to enclose it. But it could be a bed sheet. Uh, bubble wrap makes a really nice diffusion, oh, funny okay. enough. Um, uh, thin paper. There's lots of ways you could do it. Okay. When you look at my reflection or when you look at my video image, is there a lot of shadow or glare at the moment? No, no. The only real shadow is sort of under your chin. Oh, okay, you know, yeah. Sort of right under your chin, okay. um, which is a, a fine place to have a shadow that just feels natural. Lights are usually above us. It's when you have it coming from the side and you get okay. that dramatic half shadow and you look like you're, you know, you, you are on a secret mission or have some bad news <laughs> to share. So that happens we're, a lot. We're going to be buying. I know. I know. A lot of us will probably be getting those either bo the box lights or the ring lights. Any tips on like you know should we try like one on either side or do you always have one in front and one on the side or what what's your recommendation about how to use those? Uh, so typically, what you what you do is you call it a a key light, a fill light, and a backlight or edge light. Uh, and what those three things are. A, a key light is a light that's meant that's meant for you. A fill light is meant for your space, and then an edge light or a backlight is for giving you some separation from what's behind you. So what I like to do, I have a ring light right in front of me that's coming right on now because my wall, my room is small, it actually spreads out and fills the whole room. So I don't have a second fill light, but I do have a light in the corner back here that's hitting the back of my head and giving me just a bit of separation. It's actually pointed at the back of my head. And that, that's a nice way to give yourself <clears throat> some distance from whatever behind you. Let's talk about something really important that we have not addressed yet. And uh, there was one question on this. Ada asked a question on this, but I want to put a little different twist on it. Um, let's talk about the importance of sound. Mm, Most people are talking you. about how I look. Thank you let's for talk saying about sound. that. Oh, I almost feel, I feel dumb for not bringing it up first because... Honestly, I, I, I prioritize sound above the visual. Um, and, it's, and, and it's funny me saying that because uh, video is a, a visual medium first, but the fact is our ears are more sensitive than our eyes and our uh, eons of evolution of hiding in the wilderness from predators uh, have left us in a space where we have these very, very keen ears. They pay attention to things much closer than our eyes do. Our, our ears pay attention even when we're asleep, right? See, I've even turned off my camera to prove a point. No. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you have, uh, my point is that a viewer will be more forgiving of a bad image than they ever will be of bad sound. Like mm. who will look at a poorly lit shot longer than they will listen to a grainy, uh, like a really, um, ugly sound, just a real annoying sound. Uh, if you have bad audio, uh, you're gonna lose your viewer's attention very, very quickly. It, it becomes very uncomfortable. Um, so what, what are my recommendations on, on microphone is one, have a microphone. Typically I would not uh, trust to the one that's either built into your camera or your laptop screen. I would have something separate so you can get a USB microphone, like that one. <laughs> this is one you, that, very common one. That blue snowball you're using right now, that's, that's yeah. not an expensive mic. No, no, that's, this one's awesome. Yeah, it looks, uh, it looks like Steve has the same mic I have. Yeah. Uh, th this one was like around a bucks. I love that bucks. mic, yeah. But that one that you're using, I think is around 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the difference here, just for contrast, I'm gonna switch to my computer microphone. So let's see. I'm now on my computer microphone. Do you guys hear a drastic difference in what it sounds like? 
I mean, it's drastic how different. Ah, oh, Nancy's giving me two thumbs down. Come on, Nancy. And then <laughs> now let's sound good again. And now I'm back to the nicer mic. I mean, it makes a huge difference. It makes an absolutely huge difference. Well, it's like the distracting background because what I'm paying attention to with that other microphone is now the, the space that you're in, the hollowness. I can hear that you're in a big empty room. Was there, opposed, was there echo? Was there yeah, hiss? Was there yeah, that? Yeah. yeah it was a, tinny? It sounded like you were in a tunnel, kind of tinny. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. And, and, and I wouldn't even know until I watched it back. Um, but, but this is something really good. And when it comes down to where to invest some money, you know, you don't need to invest a whole lot of money. You know, when it comes down to it, this is my computer mic. These lights cost me 150 bucks. This cost me a hundred bucks and that's good enough. You know, you can just do a, a little, little tiny investment and you can look a hundred times better. Look and sound a yeah. hundred times better. Yeah. Uh, so if you can't get a USB mic or for whatever reason, or maybe you're doing videos where you're moving around and not just sitting in one place, my recommendation would be getting a microphone that could be close to your voice. So a lavalier mic, also known as a lapel mic, something that you can pin onto yourself. They've also become extremely affordable. You can get a simple one that plugs right into your phone, unless you use your, your phone as your audio recorder. Um, uh, get, get a mic as close to you as possible. What do you think about, because I've personally noticed that as long as I'm in a quiet place, my just my iPhone mic is actually pretty decent if I'm doing like not for when I'm trying to make like a real professional video but sometimes when I'm doing live video on my phone I don't bother with getting my lav mic out and plugging it in um, because I find that it sounds sounds pretty okay just from from the from the iPhone what's your thought on that like live video yeah. and that kind of thing it's like it's like you know same same thing we said before just just because you're not traveling with a uh, lav mic in your pocket all the time is no reason not to make the video, right? Uh, Apple and the other great minds that are designing these devices for us have done some pretty amazing things to dummy proof the whole production experience. Um, and, that, and that means a mic that actually cuts down a whole lot of room tone and wind noise is right there in the phone. Uh, so definitely, if don't let not having a mic prevent you from making a video. Yeah, that's really great. Uh, Ryan Dunphy, ask your question. Hey, Kenny. Hey, um, Ryan. So I can't get far away because I'm tethered here with my Apple mic to my yep. uh, Mac, but I have built myself a standing desk and I just got a whiteboard that's three by four. Is it okay to do this angle or should I move my light so the whiteboard is here and parallel to the viewer? from the participant side and then off camera i've considered getting another one of these bookcases that i'm sure you'll appreciate the decorations that are on there I have some type of visual in the background so how am i doing right now and i appreciate any brutal honesty and I'm yeah yeah, yeah. i i think that's all awesome uh with regards to shooting the whiteboard at a at the angle like that i think I think that can work, uh, but your whiteboard's not catching the majority of the light right now. I see the light right. hitting you and the wall behind you. So, I mean, it's very hard to see. Yeah, uh, and that's that. with the so, giant man marker. Yeah, that's so so either nice. either another light on this whiteboard or I would take it over to the other wall. Okay, that would probably be better. Yeah. Straight, straight on like that. Yeah, and, and on your shelf over there, I see that you have a lot of a lot of uh, icons there that, that uh, probably speak to your soul that are true to you. Right. As, as a rule, I would say limit it to right. two or three things. You know, if there's yeah, one, if not, there's one thing that really shouts you. Right. Yeah. This is not usually the background. This is just props. And, you know, as I talk about different things, you know, able to talk about. <laughs> hey, whatever. I used to work at Blockbuster uh, too. Perfect. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's easy to pull from off screen, but. All right, cool. I appreciate that. I will relocate that. I uh, got a couple questions on microphones. What mic would you suggest for someone just starting out? Uh, the Blue Yeti, which is the one Jake has, is absolutely fabulous. Highly recommend that one. The Blue Snowball is nearly as good. It just doesn't have cool dials on it to a, a 
mess with some of the levels. Those are both great starter mics. They're yeah. very easy. USB, you just plug it in. Uh, Liam, can you ask your question? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to know about, like, if you're out shooting on your phone and you want to use a Bluetooth lapel mic, there's mm -hmm. one that I've looked at before by Sabinitech called the Smart Mic, and there's another one I've seen recently. I think it was by Universal. I just wonder what your thoughts were on those. Yep, I used, I, I don't own one, but I, I used one recently and it performed like a charm. It was awesome. Was so, it that particular brand or? I don't, I don't recall. I don't okay. recall. So I can't. Uh, I would just follow the reviews and make sure the thing isn't falling apart on people. But I, I know that the tech works. I know the tech works. I've uh, used one back in February at Jake's event actually, and it really impressed me. So uh, okay. I'd, I'd go for it. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we got a couple questions on brand of lavalier mics. I'll take this one and tell you what I use. I use a Rode. That's R O O D E. Uh, just look up, Rode, R-O-O-D-E, smartphone mic. That will come up on Amazon. I think it's 80 bucks, something like that. I, I've seen them as low as 60, as high as 90. And those mics sound incredible. I they sound it's a incredible. workhorse too. Yeah, and, and when it comes down to it, when you're doing, now we don't have a lot of stage time right now. That's just kind of how it is. We don't have a lot of stage time. But when you get back to speaking on stages, you know, what Kenny talked about, about how much more important the sound is than even the video. How many times have you seen someone that has a great video of them on stage, but the mic is obviously being recorded from the back of the room and you can't finish it because it sounds yeah. terrible. Always I, makes, it hurts my heart every time. Yeah, because cause you, know that they, <laughs> you know that they paid someone to come and film that didn't know enough to tell him that he needs to be mic'd. Like that's what annoys me the most is like, yeah. they paid a videographer that didn't know that he needed to be mic'd. But so what I'll do in those situations is I'll plug the lav mic into my phone and I'll just put the phone in my pocket and I'll get the audio on my phone. I'll have the audio in my phone cause it's, it's right here and I'll, I'll just do that on, you know, you can just download any audio recorder and then later in post, we'll be able to combine the video that's from the back of the room with the audio. And all of a sudden it becomes way better. And, you know, Kenny and I have done this where we've even done two different mics where I'd record, I'd have my phone with the road mic on my lapel. And I'd also have the super high end professional one. And we ended up going with the road on my phone because it sounded better. So that, that's a really great buy is getting into that, getting the, the road lapel mic. Um, let's see, uh, Kenny, let's go into this. Just what are your last kind of thoughts for everyone when it comes to, uh, making professional video? Uh, well, the last thought is the first thought, which is, uh, the, the most important piece of uh, equipment involved in a, in a great video production is you, you know, it, it's your, it's your story. It's your character. It's your imperfections it's your flaws it's it's the whole package uh so don't don't allow yourself to get too caught up on uh on, on all the all the great pieces of of advice jake and i shared today um make sure that you get out there and just make 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 stuff and allow yourself to make mistakes allow yourself to make something ugly uh, because that's, that's the only way we grow and, and you'd be shocked at how many people will see the thing that you define as ugly and go, whoa, that was just what I needed to see today. So Love it. don't Love start it. there. Don't give up and then start doing all the other things we talked about. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Let's give Kenny a big round of applause. Let's give Kenny a big round of applause. Thank and, you. uh, thank Kenny, you so much. Can you share with us what is the best way to get connected with you? Uh, the best way is to find me on social media. My company, I, I now have a virtual video production company because we're not meeting in person uh, called Content Club. So you can find, go to contentclub.video to get in touch with me or join our Facebook group, which is also called Content Club. Very cool. Uh, Kenny, can you type the link into the comments right there? Yeah. Uh, now I have a couple more things. We'll just be another five or 10 minutes. So don't, uh, don't go anywhere yet. Uh, as we, before we get going, 
per tradition, we're going to uh, do a family photo. All right, here we go. So let's see, we have two pages of people here. So everyone, everyone come onto your screen. Everyone come onto your screen and we're gonna do two different photos. We're gonna do a smiling photo and a silly face photo because everyone loves the silly face. So, okay, I'm gonna give you another 30 seconds to come onto the screen. 30 seconds to come on the screen. And everyone, can you make sure you're muted as well? Cause there's just, you know, some, uh, you know, maybe a cat or a kid will run be behind you. Um, so, okay, everyone come up on screen. Here we go, smiling face, here we go. One, two, three. Now let's do the silly face. Now for the second page, we're gonna get the second page in here. Second page, here we go, smiling face. Now silly face. All right, thank you everyone. I'm glad that we got that. Got to get our pictures in here and have fun. Uh, I don't know what just happened. Let's see, there we go. Now we're back to normal. Okay, so Kenny, thank you very much for popping on and sharing that information. If you enjoyed that, let Kenny know. Let Kenny know that that was of value to you. Let Kenny know in the comments that that was helpful, that that was valuable, that you enjoyed that. And uh, please, everyone, inside the Facebook group, um, let people know that you enjoyed this. Let people know that you enjoyed this, that you got value out of it so that they come here. You know, my goal for this, for the Speakers, Authors, and Coaches Network, is really making this the number one resource for new and aspiring and experienced speakers, authors, and coaches. So we're doing a lot of free content here, a lot of great stuff, and we're giving tons of value. So let people know. And also in that group, you know, we got 7,000 people in that group. Uh, and we want more of them to come and check out these calls. So just let people know in there that you truly enjoyed this. Now, last thing from me, I was planning on doing another presentation now, a uh, presentation on growing your online audience. However, I decided as we were going that we should just pull an audible and keep going with Kenny because that was so valuable. That was so, there's so much value coming from that. So I don't want to take all day. Um, and, go, and keep you guys longer. But what I wanna do is tell you about, just briefly, there's nothing more important than growing your online audience. Right now, that's all we have. We don't have, we do not have a in-person audience anymore. And I can tell you what, if this thing happened four years ago, I would have been in a lot of trouble right now. I would have been very scared right now because all of my income was coming from me getting on a plane and speaking in front of a live audience. You know, all of those events are not happening. They're not happening anymore. But for me, everything's still been going great because I've built an online audience. It doesn't need to be massive because I can tell you that even with 500 of the right people, a lot of business was coming in. With 7,000 of the right people, more business comes in. But there are people who have you know, have followings of a million people. There are people who have millions. There are people who have hundreds of thousands. And that's great, but you don't need to have that. But you do need to build your own online audience with the right people. So who are the people that we want to build that audience with? We want to build that audience with people. There's two different types of people that we want in our audience, in our network. And everyone write these down. Number one, we want to have people who can do business with us people who can buy from us. People make this mistake often. They say, oh, I'm building my online audience. And then they say, but no one's buying from me. And I start to dissect and see, well, why is that the case? And then it turns out everyone that's in their audience is not their potential buyers, it's all their peers. And you know, unless those people, unless your peer group is your potential buyers, it's not gonna help you. We need to build the right audience, we need to build an audience with the right people. So number one is the people who can do business with you. And then number two is people that you can collaborate with. So that's gonna be people in your industry who service the same kinds of people. My attitude is always about, it's always about a rising tide lifts all ships. It's always about that, we can grow together. So I'm always looking for other people that I can partner with that are at a similar level to me so that I can grow, so that I can grow and they can grow and we can all grow together. And if somebody has an attitude of competition, uh, well, I'm just not going to do anything with them. That's just kind of how, how it goes. I'm going to do business with people who are, 
uh, have that same kind of mindset. But these are the two types of people that we want to build our audience with because you can put out great video content, you can put out great written content, you can send out great emails, you can, you can put out great, all sorts of great things. But if there's no one to read it, to listen to it, to watch it, other than your spouse, that random cousin who's really supportive, a uh, couple friends that you met at some conference, then why does it matter? You know, what, what is it doing for you? Because I think a lot of people start to feel like social media is a waste of time. And the truth is, it is a waste of time if you're not connecting with the right people. So I have a very different view of social media than most. I'm not interested in becoming internet famous. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm working on building a strong network, a strong community of people who are the right people. The people that I can serve, the people I can collaborate with. Those are the two types of people. I'm interested in building a strong network, strong community with those people. And for you, you need to be clear. And that, that's, I had a lot more to, to go into today, but like I said, I felt like what we were going through with Kenny was more important today to get, get through that since we had him here. But you must, this is the training for today, is you must be clear on those two types of people. Who are the people that you do business with? And who are the types of people that you can collaborate with? And you need to get clear on those two things. And then from there, it's very simple. You're gonna ask yourself, where are they hanging out? Let's make it as simple as possible. Where are they hanging out? Now, right now, we're talking about online because we're not going into any in-person events right now. We're not going to conferences right now. We're not going to events because that's a great place to do it. But right now, it could be online. So you can go, you know, what, what groups are they hanging out in? What virtual events are they hanging out at? Uh, what hashtags are they using? You might ask yourself, what people have influence over these types of people? And I, I divide that into three different groups. I take my dream team people. These are like the high level people that I'm probably not gonna have any chance to have a relationship with, at least in the, in the time being. Um, but they, they help me get my, my thoughts going because I start going, okay, well, that's what this person looks like. Sometimes it's easier to find those people. Sometimes it's easier to think about those people. Who are the people who have an audience of my right people, right? Who are those people? So you look at that and you go, okay, those are the dream team. It'd be, a, it'd be amazing to be able to partner with those people. Then I take it one step down and I say, who are the micro influencers? Who are the micro influencers that have people? that have my audience, that have influence over my audience. And what I mean by that is they're not someone who has millions of followers. They're someone who has great influence over thousands of people that are your people. You know, so we're looking at people that are, are not the household names in the industry. We're looking for people who have, they still have a platform, but they're probably gonna be more accessible. I would be an example of something like that. I would be an example of what I call a micro influencer because yeah, I have, you know, between email lists, between social media, we're talking 15,000 people in the grand scheme of things. That's nothing. That's still very small. If you send me an email, I'm going to read it. If I send Tony Robbins an email, he's not going to see it. So that that's kind of the difference there. Then let's take that one level below and say, who are my peers that are also trying to do this same kind of thing? Who are my peers that are also doing the same kind of thing? They're at my level, they're one level below or one level above in terms of their growth, in terms of their size. And with those people, I say, well, how can I collaborate with them? How can I build a connection? How can I do that? How can I build that kind of thing? How can I help that grow? Now, uh, Greg asked, uh, thank for, thank you. he said, thank you for all you do for us. Will you still do the building an online audience training for us. So yes, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, this was the training I was planning on doing in here. I was actually planning on doing about a 15 minute version of this. I have already pre-recorded a 40 minute in-depth version of this. And so everyone can go and get that. You can watch that training. Like I said, I was planning on doing a, a live one. I'll save that for our next, uh, our next meetup to really get into it. Do we go do questions? 
but this is a 40 minute in-depth version of this and you can get that right now here at that link that I just posted speakerauthorcoach.net slash grow this is six different ways that you can organically grow your online audience now, what do I mean by that organically means it's free you can, you can grow your audience for free. Here's six different ways in which you can do it. And the great news is all of these different ways you can do from home. You can do from home. You don't need to leave your house. And when I say six different ways, they're really six different categories is really what it comes down to. There's six different categories and there's tons of ways within it. I don't want anyone to ever feel like I don't know how to grow my audience. I don't want anyone to feel that way because there are so many ways for us to grow our audience. And what I just got into about knowing who those people are and where they hang out and where they're at. You know, that's just one of these ways. That's a very effective way to do this so we can connect with those types of people. And I'll tell you this, when it comes to connecting in groups, connecting at those online meetups, I'll just share one tip for you and then we'll move on and uh, get out of here for the day. But the tip is, this is gonna sound crazy and it's also gonna go right along with what Kenny said. Be an actual human being. Act like a human. Treat the online world like it was a real networking event. So if I was at a real networking event, would I, now I know people do this and I can't stand those people, but would I go up to someone? Would I walk up to you? Let's just see. Would I walk up to Dr. Catherine and would I walk up to you and say, hey, here's my business card. My name's Jake Ballantyne. I can help you with this. This is what I do. How about you buy something from me? No way would I do that. No way would I do that. I'd say, hey, Dr. Catherine, very interesting. What are you a doctor in? That's interesting. Tell me about yourself. That's what I would do if I was at a live event, at a networking event in front of a real human being. So why don't we do the same thing when it comes to online? Why don't we do the same thing? Now, I treat a Facebook group at the beginning of what I did, and I see it every day because people come into my Facebook group and they say, oh, wow, cool, there's 7,000 people there. I want to get in front of those people. And what they do is say, here's my thing. Come join this. Here's this. Buy this. Here's this. And even when I don't delete it, but spoiler alert, I delete all of them, and I have people who delete all of them because that's against our rules in the group. But even when I forget or when I have a weekend where none of us are on there to delete things, nobody sees it. Nobody reacts to it. It's not even effective. So stop wasting your time. Instead, treat it like a real networking event. So what would you do at a real networking event? If you know, you're at a networking event, you have a round you know, before, before the speaker goes, everyone introduces themselves and they say something interesting about themselves. Well, if someone said something interesting about something that I can relate to, I'm going to go up to that person. I'm going to say, wow, that's really interesting. Oh, I used to live there. Oh, you're trying to do that? I know some things about that. Maybe I can help you. I would do that. Or if somebody asked a question during the event, I would then answer the question. And if I didn't get a chance to answer the question within the group, I would now go up to that person afterwards in the break and say, hey, I had some more insight in what you said. And people are so quick to try to grow now that they go so fast that nothing ends up happening. And so here's a line I want you to think about in your head. Slow down so that you can grow fast. I say that again. Slow down so that you can grow fast. So if you were to go into a group, now you want to do this with people with a group that's filled with your ideal audience, not just any group. You want to do this with a group that's filled with your ideal audience. And instead of just trying to get people to do something or get people to go somewhere, start answering questions. And every time someone posts a question, start answering a question, start answering, start commenting, start, start telling people what they can do. Start being an active member. And instead of trying to be the guy who says, Hey, guess what? Look at me, look at me, look at me. If you start saying, how can I help you? Here, help um, right in the comments, help there, help people. You show up and people all of a sudden say, wow, yo, who's that Ryan guy? Who's that Steve guy? Yo, who's, who's this Richard guy? Wow, cool. Who's Dr. Catherine? She's saying all this great stuff all the time. Who is this? And then you start to get noticed and you grow so much quicker than when you try to do the quick things. So 
This is just one of the many, many ways I made this, this free guide, free training. It's not just a, there's a guide with it, but there's also a 40 minute training that goes along with it. And this is real, real value for you guys. So go and check that out. There's the link. Go and get that right away. It will be sent to you right away. That was essentially the training I was going to do today. But all of you are going to get great, great value from that. And as we end, as we end here today, I'd like to hear uh, from three people about their number one takeaway from today's call. Uh, let's start with Jason. Jason, share your number one takeaway from today's call. Uh, you're muted. There you go. Now you're unmuted. Got it. Thanks. I just appreciate the authenticity piece. It, it can be, sometimes it feels like the hardest. Um, you, I want to feel polished up and figuring out that balance between seeming like I'm meeting my crowd, the people I'm reaching towards, and just being a real human. So I think that was a piece that stood out the most. Love it. Love it. Uh, let's hear, how about Richard Green? What was your number one takeaway? Oh, you're still muted. Uh, you unmuted yourself and then muted yourself again. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Now you can hear me, right? Yes. Kenny, thank you so much. It was great stuff. Everything was great. Uh, I tell you the one thing that uh, I had forgotten about, and I've been doing some videos. And uh, and I love, by the way, I love authenticity. It's super. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world, especially when you're first getting started. But I realized I wasn't using my very nice Blue Yeti uh, mic. And I realized that a lot of the videos I've been doing lately, maybe the sound quality is not so good. So that was kind of a reminder. It's been sitting on the desk next to me and not plugged in. So that was my takeaway. That, that That's maybe more important than the video. Yeah, wonderful. Sounds good. Uh, Teresa, share your number one takeaway. Okay. I'm actually like listening on my phone and watching on my laptop. There you go. <sighs> lot fell apart today. Um, and I was still doing dinner. So I, again, I don't want to not be original. I appreciate the authenticity piece only for me because I think I actually hit like 30 consecutive days of doing, posting a video on Facebook today or yesterday. And, um, and that's exactly what, how I show up, you know, nothing about it is professional, but I'm, um, every day just trying to very my, very much be myself. And, um, I liked the other thing that's sticking out for me is when it gets hard. Um, or when you don't, when you're struggling to come up with it, or it's not fun anymore. Um, I think I always think I have plenty of ideas. Sometimes I struggle with what I'm doing today because I don't have it planned too far out, but, um, yeah, it, and, and it, the earlier in the day you get it done, no matter what time you want to post it, the earlier in the day you want to get it done, it's nice to know that you have that done if that's one of your goals. Yes, yes. Now I'm, now I'm adding on instead of telling my big takeaway. I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I great, appreciate it. Great to that. be here. Thank you. And, and one last thing I want to add on that is have fun with what you're doing. Have fun. Remember, every one of you got into this because you didn't want to do that job right? I don't want to do that job. I want to go out there and make a difference. I want to do those things. But it's really often that I hear from people that they're not having as much fun as they thought they would, or they're so stressed out, or they're so, you know, whatever, they're dealing with it. I'm going to tell you this. This is something that my grandfather, Kenny and I, we have the same grandfather, you know, kind of crazy, same parents, also same grandfather. And uh, our grandfather, Dr. Robert Schofield, uh, psychiatrist who shared so much wisdom, one of the things he said all the time is there are no big deals. Even if you think it's a big deal, it's not a big deal. There are no big deals. It's only a big deal if you make it a big deal in your mind. That's it. It's only a big deal if you make it a big deal in your mind. So let go. I hear all the time from people saying, you know, I, I, I just wish I was more successful. I wish this was working better. I wish I was more successful. Well, people can see that in your videos. People could see that. You know, if you squeeze something too tight, it's going to slip away. People can see that you're not there to serve. You're there because you want to be more successful. And I want you to get back in touch when it comes down to authenticity, when it comes down to the genuity that Kenny's talking about, it really comes down to why are you there? You're there to serve. You're there to make a difference. 
forget yourself, go to work, have fun, share your message, enjoy yourself as you're doing this. Remember, you chose to do this. This is what you're doing because you chose to do it. And go out there and share your message. Go out there and make a difference. And we're going to end with a Speakers, Authors, and Coaches Network virtual meetup, virtual fist bump. And we'll bring it in. Virtual fist bump. There you go. Boom. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys later. Bye.